Okay, so um, in keeping with the new um, in, in keeping with the new curriculum, this is within the slow nine teaching syllabus. Okay, so the objectives. So I'm going to go quickly on the the benefits of peer teaching within the, our training program. We're going to talk about the the presentation, some of the presentation skills that we may need, the approaches and why and how we do it, and some of the tips and tricks. I re has retained this quote from the 2015 CC23 syllabus because I, I like it. It says that a good physician will ensure that the knowledge possessed is communicated effectively. And in the formal setting of teaching and training, specific competences will have to be acquired to ensure that the practitioner recognizes the best practices and techniques. In other words, a good physician should also be a good teacher. This is a repeat of what I mentioned earlier. So this is sort of, you know, the, this is the three levels of teaching um, uh, skills and competencies as you go through your training from sort of basic ACCS to middle level to the highest level. These are the, the new 2021 uh, Arkham syllabus stating out what you are expected to be able to do. And I'm just pulling out the, the two bits. One uh, within the, the, the whole syllabus. One is basically is to set learning objectives for and deliver a teaching session and able to prepare and deliver that sessions, which may include simulation, small group work and didactic teaching. We've talked about this before, the different levels of knowledge, which is, starts from the lowest level, which is just to remember it, which in reality, um, a peer teaching would probably be expected to try to achieve some memory recall of the knowledge. But uh, uh, this is why we teach. If you just turn up for a lecture, you have retention of about 5%, but if you actually turn, turn up and actually do the teaching yourself, you, if you do it properly, you will find that you have a 90% retention rate of the knowledge that you are teaching. And this is why we do it. Right, key thing is to set learning objectives. It is simplified for us in a sense that we are, the learning objectives has already been set by the Oracle syllabus. We talk about the five different criteria within each um, syllabus that we are trying to teach. And so, this is an example from the old syllabus, but it's still relevant in the sense of how what we're trying to do. So we, you sort of set your objectives and you make sure that when you present it, you fulfill every line of that objective. Okay. The different teaching strategies which may differ depending on what you do. Uh, you know, you can have large group lecture based type teaching. You can have Small, smaller group tutorial teaching where it's a lot more interactive. Uh, you can have the more practical hands-on type sessions, which is probably more like sim sessions. But the key issue with any of these teaching sessions is to ensure that you have an engaged audience. In other words, you, you need to ensure that you avoid the falling asleep in lecture problem or a loss of interest problem. Remember to gauge and tailor your peer teaching to um, to the sort of knowledge level of, of between the presenter and also the audience. You think about using various types of visual, audio visual aid. The most common one which we currently use is obviously PowerPoint slides. And the key thing is to continue to have direct engagement with the audience. So we know about this already. Let's move on. Now, these are the thing, the, the sort of little, little tips and pointers which I want to do is talk about. Audio visual aids, use of PowerPoint slides, potentially sound, videos, and pictures. 
PowerPoint slides. What do you see here? It's a huge, huge amount of, of words. I call this a problem crowding. What you end up doing is you stop listening to me and you start trying to read all the words within these slides. And that defeats the whole purpose of the presentation or of the slides. The slides should be guiding what you're doing, not the other way around. The slides should be guiding the audience attention to what you're trying to say, rather than distract the audience from what you're trying to say by actually forcing them to focus on the slides and reading the details of what you're putting together. So make sure that you're, you, when you put together your slides, to avoid crowding. This is a very common problem that I see across the board that happens very regularly. This is the this is just an example of the different key points. So if you look at that, every line of that I have simplified it into just a single word from here. If you look at it, Line one, knowledge, comprehension, application, analysis, synthesis, evaluation. And in reality, this talks, so this is much less crowded. It focuses the audience to say, actually, this is what I'm going to talk about. And they, you then are able, but much better able to engage with them and talk to them about what you're trying to say. Then the other thing to do, this is the key thing. What is the message? within the slide. Roughly, normally you have one key message per slide, not multiple message per slide, messages per slide, because again, that is crowding and that is potentially confusing the audience. It's far better to have more slides, shorter period of time, than to have one slide with lots of different things and spending a long time within that slide. The next thing to, 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 to consider is, okay, you now have these five headings within the, the slide. How do you draw the, the audience attention to what you're trying to say? Which, you know, what are you talking about now at this point? So the different ways to draw the attention. One is to use animation. You can also use, well, again, more different type of animation, you can change the color to say, hey, I'm talking about knowledge right now. Because you know, it's just a little bit different compared to the rest. Change the color, and again, you can change the color in different ways. You can highlight it rather than change the color of the font. You can change the size of the font that you're talking of, of, of the, within of the topic you're, you're focusing on. You can change the style. Again, change of color. So there are different ways to draw the, the audience attention to say, although I talk about one slide, one message, this is an alter this is one way to keep to that theme of one slide, one message. Because at the moment, this currently talks about evaluation. It's clear that I want to talk about evaluation because the evaluation uh, topic is highlight is in yellow color, the rest is in white. We'll talk about PowerPoint slides, sounds and videos. It is not easy to do it well, especially sound. I, one, I see it done well. It is commonly used as a shock factor, as a comedy. It's just to get the, the audience initial attention. If you want to use it for educational purposes, be very clear on what you're trying to achieve with your videos and with your sound. Right. And think about not having a, a video that is too prolonged. Remember that the audience attention span rarely lasts beyond two minutes when you're looking at whatever material that you are trying to show, which is why I talk about actually having more slides, shorter period when you talk about each slide. That's part of the issue. You can think about creating your own videos if you have the ability, I don't. And the other thing is to learn potentially how to embed 
videos from uh, online sources potentially within your presentation if that is if that helps or that is a, a useful way for you to present your message across pictures use if you look at the picture between the right hand side and the left hand side column you can see the right hand side column has much much clearer compared to the left my suggestion, especially when you start presenting uh, at conferences where the uh, picture, where the, your slides are blown out multiple times or the size of the entire conference hall, you would be best to use as high quality as possible with, with your slides, uh, with the pictures that you use. Okay, now learn to take a snapshot of your PDF file. What I've seen people do is the picture on the left, which they use their camera from their mobile phone and take a picture of a screen from the um, of, of the computer or, or, or to take a, but when in reality, the, the Adobe Reader has a take a snapshot function, which you can basically uh, copy and uh, with a high quality and clear way uh, to uh, to reproduce the basically the PDF snapshot of what you are trying to put together. So you see see the difference between the left hand side column and the quality on the left hand side column and quality on the right hand side column. The quality on the right hand side column is, is done using a take a snapshot function, and obviously the one in the left. You can see the difference in what I would consider the professionalism. You know, the one on the left just looks very amateur, you know, and basically taken with a mobile phone, low quality, and you can see the various other bits that comes with it. So if you, anybody who still doesn't understand how to take a snapshot function, come and talk to me later and I will show it to you. Uh, it's quite, quite pretty straightforward once you know of this function. So in, in summary, Use the RCM syllabus as a guidance. Set your objective clearly from the beginning. You, we've talked about in the previous presentation about the five headings that you, uh, that you should be using. And we should all be using all those five headings for every presentation we're doing. One message per slide. Remember to avoid overcrowding. The slides are not for people to read in detail, and especially not for you to read in detail. If you need to read the slides to do your presentation, you have not done your presentation preparation appropriately. Think about using color schemes, figures, art. Make sure you know your topic. On average, you are, for every hour of presentation, you should have considered about four hours of preparation time. If you use less than that prep time, in reality, you probably have not spent enough time uh, learning the topic um, or, uh, or putting it together. And remember, teaching it is the best way to learn the topic yourself. So when you select a topic to present, think about presenting the topic that you struggle or you know least because at the end of that exercise of putting two things together and presenting it to your peers, you will find that you have likely learned that topic. Thank you.